Star Wars Jedi Survivor has a lightsaber that constantly changes color. Like there are some big things and features that the game does not tell you about or that you can easily skip or miss. So I want to go over them, share some tips in this video. Let's start with the big one, New Game Plus. We had to wait six months to see this feature added to Fallen Order, but we have it immediately at the launch of Survivor and it's more fleshed out as well. So obviously you unlock it after finishing the main story and then by going to the menu you will see this New Journey Plus option and also what it adds and changes. I want to touch on the most exciting additions that you already see here in a moment, but first, good to know is that during this mode you start with all your Stim Canister upgrades, all your cosmetics and the five lightsaber stances are immediately unlocked. In your first playthrough you will have to get them by just playing through the main story. They are all unlocked relatively early but now in New Game Plus you can do the first few hours with these combat styles as well. All your skill points are reset but you can immediately spend them again at the first meditation point you come across and Akal of course during the main story learns some like special abilities like the air dash and certain environmental force powers. They will be removed at the start of New Game Plus and then have to be earned again through the main story, otherwise it would of course screw up the whole progression. They also did it like this in Fallen Order. At the first meditation point in New Game Plus you can also immediately equip three new perks. So perks are passive bonuses that either enhance a certain playstyle, give you extra gains or completely change the game and these New Game Plus exclusive perks fall in that final camp. So normally perks fill up slots so you can't like equip all of them at the same time but that's not the case for these new blue New Game Plus variants. So they're basically modifiers that you can enable at any meditation point. One is already active from the start called Warrior and this replaces standard enemies with new more difficult combat encounters. So then you can already encounter flame troopers or DT sentry droids on the first planet Coruscant while in your first playthrough they spawn way later. Like I think it's a cool twist to make this second playthrough feel quite different and more challenging. And again you can turn this off if you want. The second New Game Plus perk Purity massively increases the weapon damage for both you and your foes, basically meaning that you can one-shot almost every enemy, but that they deal a ton of damage to you as well. So it's really a risk-reward thing, especially crazy on the Jedi Grandmaster difficulty if you're up for it. And the third and final New Game Plus perk is more a gimmick. This resets all your cosmetics when you die and really everything. So every time you respawn, Cal will look different, you have a different saber and the BD-1 will look different as well. It's a, a fun twist. But then when you reach the first workbench on your Mantis, which like an hour or so into your playthrough, you can see the brand new lightsaber colors. Yes, just like in Fallen Order, you unlock red immediately when you start New Game Plus, but this also means that it's not available in your regular playthrough, only in New Game Plus. But there's more, because completely new are what they call party sabers that change color every time you swing your lightsaber or parry an incoming attack. So they will just change color constantly. And this actually looks really cool and unique. <laughs> only red does not seem to be included though, so hopefully they add that later. But yeah, I think it's cool. You already have a ton of lightsaber colors during your first playthrough, unlocked immediately, so you can change them at the workbench. But then in New Game Plus, you got red and those party lightsabers to add also to the replayability. But there's way more I want to go over. Of course, if you got some questions, drop them in the comments. A like on the video would really help me out. And subscribe for way more spoiler-free Jedi Survivor videos like this. Before I touch on a pretty cool mini game you can do in the saloon, I want to go over some other things you can find here, like an aquarium where fish will swim that you can find on different planets. Look for this ship and talk to Skova to unlock a new fish. If you go over here on the map in Kobo, which is close to the Ramblers Reach settlement, you will find Ash and her music droids. Talk to them and they will play tracks in the saloon afterwards. And you can unlock even more tracks from chests in the open world or by going to Doma's shop, which is close to the saloon. Here you can also buy cosmetics for Kyle and a key code that gives you a new steam canister. So totally smart to buy that first for 10 prior ride shards. And you can easily find this resource by looking for these glowing things on each planet. Like you will come across quite a lot of them if you just keep an eye out even during the main story. You also want to look out for these plants with the 
sort of fireflies around them. Hitting them with your lightsaber will namely add the seeds to your inventory so you can plant them in the garden on the roof of the saloon. And you can access it on the first floor via the door that looks like this. You'll plant seeds and then if you come back later the plants will have grown. It's just cosmetic though. I don't think you get any other benefits. You can decide to completely skip it but there is a trophy or achievement linked to this as well. And then if we climb up right here from the garden we find a four stair. You can also find these by going off the beaten path during linear missions or by exploring Kobo, the more open planet. And these can vary from platforming puzzles where each time you jump, the wall that will hurt you changes sides, which a fun little twist. And there are also more regular combat encounters, similar to the combat challenges actually that were added post-launch to Fallen Order. So here you have to defeat a group of enemies, although it can get crazy. At one point I had to take out 150 battle droids for one of these challenges. It's satisfying though as they all die from one hit, but you will get overwhelmed when they all run at you with explosives. Still fun though, and by the way, if you pull up the collectibles on the map, you will see in which region a four stair is hidden. And completing these gives you one skill point. There's also a timer running to see how fast you are, and you can always go for a better time, but I wish we could do this from a menu instead of having to go back to the four stair again. I also really like the new bounty system. We already discussed it a bit in our review. If you haven't watched it yet, I will leave a link to it in the video description. But yeah, in short, you start it during a main mission on Kobo. You cannot miss it. It's also relatively early on in the game. And then Kate will be in the saloon who you can talk to for a new bounty. So we're now hunting the bounty hunters instead of them hunting us. So once you got a new bounty, you can check the target in the bounty menu, go to the target's planet, and then from this menu you can also immediately see where they are on the map and then go and take them out. So this is just a regular fight against one bounty hunter, but they will get more challenging as you go after the tougher enemies. Plus there might be some surprise as well that it won't spoil, so totally give this system a shot. And the unlocks are pretty nice too, so every time you kill a bounty hunter you get a puck, which you can then exchange for upgrades to the blaster stance. So pretty nice. And just like in Fallen Order by the way, you can scan enemies after you first encounter them, giving you some XP and adding their info to your tactical guide, which has seen some nice improvements first Fallen Order with way more fleshed out tips on how to fight these enemies and I think the overall UI looks way better as well. You can also see where you last encountered the enemies, which I think is a nice touch. And there's of course an overall description of the target. But a new feature that is linked to scanning these enemies is the Hollow Tactics minigame. I kind of compare it to the Gwent or Machine Strike activity, but in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. First of all though, we have to find Bima and Atuli on a Kobo, who you can miss if you don't explore the planet. You can save them after being able to ride a mount, which happens relatively early in the main story after going to the forest array for the main quest. They want to head over here on the map, so this is the Mantis, we're on Kobo, and then we head to the Boiling Bluff Meditation Point, that's where you want to go. Use the mount to get higher up and then save them from the Mogu. After you are successful, you can talk to them to unlock this mini game in the saloon. You can easily find it on the first floor like this and they can challenge NPCs who you encountered in the world. So you can also unlock more opponents over time. After choosing the person you want to battle, you will see the units that they got on the field for the first wave. So then it's up to you to find the best enemies that would win in this combat scenario. But you have to be smart as you only have a limited amount of battle points per wave and the stronger the units, the higher they cost. Another layer is that if you don't spend all your battle points in this wave, you take them with you to the next wave, which will make that one a bit easier. And again, this is also where the enemy scans come in, because all the enemies you scanned will be unlocked as units in the Hollow Tactics game. And I had way more fun with this than I anticipated. And I really like how your knowledge of the game's combat actually gives you an edge in this mini game as well. Like knowing the moves of every enemy will help you decide which one is the best for each situation. Like I found that the DT sentry droid with the hammer and missiles is insanely powerful as like a tank that will charge into battle. So then combining it with some good ranged enemies is super effective. But again, it also depends on the units on the field. Every opponent gives a unique reward when you defeat them. 
Although I'm not really impressed by what I've seen so far. But maybe after winning against every enemy, you get something extra or something. I will like report back if I found anything. And if you do, of course, when playing the game, let me also know in the comments down below. Now the photo mode has seen some improvements for its Fallen Order and it's also available at launch, while for the previous game, it was added with a post-launch update. For one, smart to take pictures in the quality mode by turning off the performance mode if you're on console, so then the image looks way better. And we've seen some improvements like the focus distance has seen some improvements you can now add like extra light sources you can save camera positions it can also have a bit more options in regards to hiding certain characters and i'm not sure if these frames were already in but yeah we want to highlight your photos at the end of every news and update survivor video so totally use the jedi raptor hashtag again on twitter or join the discord via the link in the pinned comment accept the rules if you are new and then check the dedicated jedi survivor pick Pictures channel there and then maybe your picture will be highlighted in a future Jedi Survivor video of course subscribe to not miss those a like would really help me out you can check out our previous video by clicking on the screen if you haven't already I will speak to you soon goodbye